What is your did it before it was cool thing? I was a big freaking nerd and gamer in the late 80s and 90s. What's funny is in 2000 I went to an EverQuest guild meetup in Toronto and customs was incredulous. You're coming to another country to meet people you met in a video game online asked like 10 times in different ways. Then in 2008-ish I went to Toronto again for a, then wow, meetup. Why are you coming to Canada World of Warcraft guild meetup? How long are you staying a week? Enjoy your visit. I went to an anime manga convention in Toronto in 1998. They couldn't even get a proper space. It was spread out over various rooms somewhere near UOF if I recall. They used some small lecture rooms as screening for movies. Night and day compared to what conventions were by the 2010s. I had a fidget spinner on my desk for about 6 months before they blew up. At that time they weren't being mass produced at all. You pretty much got them 3D printed or laser cut from acrylic. I thought they were neat and sent them to my dad and brothers for Christmas. I still have my first one on my desk. It's laser cut in yellow acrylic. Same. My friends and I made fidget spinners around the same time with zip ties and cheap skateboard bearings. We made a killing of them before they were mass produced. Bought Bitcoin in late 2010. Was on a Malay-Asian private server for an old game I used to love, called Risk Your Life. Wow. This server has a real money mall and of course I am dumb enough to want to pay to win. So I go on their site and they don't take normal credit card or PayPal but they offer some weird crap called Bitcoin. So I go through the steps to buy it, spent around 100 US dollars for around 1000 Bitcoin. Spent 600 of the Bitcoin on some rings a sword an amulet and an armor. And 400 sat on my wallet until I sold most of it in 2017 for an absolutely massive profit. Still holding a few and changed my entire life. Finally a freaking Bitcoin happy story. So many peeps in here who spent it all on BS. When I was a young kid, my dad brought home a Fairchild gaming system, and I got addicted to playing video games like Pong and Breakout on my home television. This would have been 1976. During that time I was in college. At a party one night someone turned on Pong on the TV. The room got quiet as we all watched two people play the game. Fascinated by it. I ordered Nirvana's Bleach on cassette before Nevermind came out. Saw in a magazine that they were supporting Sonic Youth. And Dream Nation was my favorite album at the time. So that was enough of an endorsement for me. I was the coolest 14 year old in New Zealand for, like, 2 months. Then Smells Like Teen Spirit came out. And I spent the rest of my teenage years declaring that I liked them before they were cool. Nobody cared. And I still miss Kurt. I wasn't too far behind you. Nirvana at St. James Theatre was my first concert. Also 14. Not as cool as you though. I bought Bleach after Nevermind. I don't mean to brag, but I bought the Popeye's chicken sandwich like a week or so before it exploded in popularity and people started killing themselves for it. I did this too. I happened to go into Popeye's and I wanted their shrimp po' boy. They were out of shrimp and suggested trying the chicken sandwich. I thought it was okay, then a week or so later the line was an hour long. Storage unit auctions. Before 2010 when the storage wars show first started, you could find auctions with a few bidders, mainly pawn shop guys, but find smaller ones on the cheap for furniture, especially during my cheap college years. Show up. Place a bid for $20, get a couple end tables, bed and chair. Thanks to that show, everyone thinks they'll hit the jackpot. As if people who default on their units or leave behind 1940s memorabilia or something. Bids skyrocketed beyond comprehension on or around 2011. It just hasn't been worth it since then. Most the stuff is junk. People, the TV shows are fixed and edited. It's not worth it thinking something is always hidden, people with valuables many times put that in a safety deposit box, not a storage shed unit. I feel bad for the college kids who not only can't get decent apartment rent levels, but also can't get furniture on the cheap from storage sheds like I used to, simply because of the false expectations from a fixed TV show. I read the Infinity Gauntlet comics when they first came out and had Thanos and the Silver Surfer on my birthday cake back in 1993. Not really a cool thing but back in the 80s I worked at a resort where we paid ridiculous amounts for things like toilet paper, paper towels, 
and other consumables to be delivered. The newly opened Sam's Club had way better prices but we didn't have big enough vehicles all the time to go pick supplies up on a regular basis. So I just walked up to the manager and told him things like we spent 13k dollars a year on toilet paper and other details and how it would be nice if they delivered. He thought about it, crunched some numbers, and a few days later he called us and said they would do it. The manager later told us he got all kinds of kudos from his management for thinking out of the box and that they were going to start offering this service in other locations. So yeah, I did that. I'm trying to reconcile a $13k toilet paper budget with a $0 truck budget. I used to record with a VCR when I played Mario Bros 2. When VCR recording came out I thought, hey, I could record whatever is on the TV right. It worked. I was floored. I ended up watching the tape once and thought it was the coolest thing ever. This was on a huge furniture tube TV that sat on the floor and only had a few channels you selected with a dial. So. I pretty was a Twitch streamer before it was cool. The only minor difference was I didn't make millions of copies and mail them out to the masses. Minor. I used to drink from jars 20 years ago. My friends thought it was so cool to casually sip red wine from something else than a wine glass lol. My college roommate was from Seattle he had been to a few Macklemore shows when he was in high school. I remember when Language of My World came out. My roommate was certain that McLemore would go from being a semi-underground PNW rapper to a household name. Later on, we had tickets to see him at a small show in Vermont. We bought the tickets a few weeks before the heist came out. I think we bought the tickets for $15 each. We bought three tickets and our other friend couldn't come. We ended up selling that ticket for a few hundred bucks it paid for our gas and drinks for that weekend trip. My high school friends were freaking convinced half that local band Slipknot was going to be some big deal. So they'd go watch them play in like basements and crap. I saw them play in a field once with people gathered around them in a circle. Rollerblading. Ahem. Bear with me. I bought a pair in the US circa 1989. When the only people using them were ice hockey players doing summer training. And they were completely unheard of in Europe brought them back to the uk and for a while i was the most cutting edge skater in town by the time they became popular and dare i say cool i'd already ditched them and moved on and no the hardest thing about it was not telling my dad i am gay i remained safely in the closet oh he knows saw acdc in concert before they were cool at least before they were cool in fresno there was a lot of serious heckling and booing cups and stuff thrown onto the stage. Bon Scott dropped his trousers and bared his butt to the crowd then walked off the stage. If I recall correctly, there was nothing wrong with the performance, but the people were there to see Aerosmith, and were just didn't want to wait. Competitive gaming. You used to be an absolute loser if you were into it, now those same kids are basically celebrities. My time spent on game battles back in the day on Rainbow Six. If only I had that kind of time now. Guess I'll spend a few more hours this weekend trying to hit GC in Rocket League. I used to monitor Apple's App Store religiously on my iPod Touch. Every Thursday afternoon they would update it with a fresh set of curated up and coming games. I got Temple Run the first day they showcased it but deleted it after 10 minutes because I thought the graphics were weird. Two weeks later everyone at my school was playing it. Listened to podcasts before they were podcasts, recorded shows, just like today, some were for online distribution, others were recorded versions of broadcasts, were put on a web server or FTP server where you could come download them, they weren't quite podcasts yet, because the idea of hooking them up with an RSS feed hadn't come out yet, not even sure if RSS had been invented yet, tbh, so I had a script that ran as a cron job on my desktop which would grab a directory listing at regular intervals and download anything I didn't already have. Most of them were mp3, of course, but at least one was real audio. I remember back in the early 2000s when these were called radio free shows or radioless shows instead of podcasts. Play Dota. I was one of the beta testers for the original Defense of the Ancients custom map on Warcraft 3 back in 2002 to 2003. Sadly, the creator, a guy named Yule, chose not to port the map to the Frozen Throne expansion when it came out, for reasons I still don't understand. 
Another guy named Ginsu stole the map and ported it over instead as Dota Elsters. Today, Ginsu, not Yul, is remembered as the creator of Dota, which is a bit frustrating for us original folks. Comma today, Ginsu, not Yul, is remembered as the creator of Dota, which is a bit frustrating for us original folks. People that know the actual history know there were many people involved. People that don't know the actual history probably don't know either of those names and assume Ice Frog did all of it. Everything nerdy. I attended high school in the 90s and you kept the nerdy crap hidden. Then came the Star Wars Special Editions. Then LOTR won a bunch of Oscars. Nerd stuff became more and more mainstream. Then the cool kids started watching Game of Thrones. Now Dungeons and Dragons is having its biggest growth ever. So grateful. I love how it's no longer niche targeted at young males. Now, the neckbuds who get triggered over fake geek girls, I don't understand them. I'm old enough to remember when a girl who had the same interests as you was a good thing and the basis for a relationship. This ticks me off. Gatekeeping fandoms or interests on the basis of gender is so bizarre. Eating blocks of cheese, without cutting it. Not cool yet, but I have hope. Don't worry, you're cool in my book. Watching Bob Ross. Literally the only channel that was decent in my house was PBS. As soon as I came home from school it was on. I adored Bob Ross as a kid he was so pleasant. Black Panther was my son's favorite superhero back in like 2014. There was no character merch and I paid ridiculous money to find discontinued Black Panther toys. Flash forward a couple years and we're at the theater on opening day in full Black Panther costumes. I did security at a nitty ditty dirt band concert. They didn't need security, so I spent my night drinking with the band, and got $15 an hour in $1983. Best drinking gig I ever nailed. Fishing in the dark is not about fishing. I was the first boy in my middle school to pierce my ears, trying to be like my big brother. Everyone roasted my butt to the point I just had to take them out. Fast forward a couple years to high school and every dude that gave me crap for pierced ears had gotten it done themselves. My whole office got sick around January 2020. My brother was flying in with my two baby nephews and I was determined to see them. I worked at a long term care pharmacy at the time so I went to the pharmacy side and wore a mask. It was like a cold or the flu but a lot of coughing that lasted almost 3 weeks. Some of the heavier people complained of shortness of breath. Except me of course. The was paranoid dumbass who's wearing a medical mask just because we have a cough. Looking back I guessed I missed out on some sweet sweet antibodies but oh well. I won. How nice of you to think about your baby nephews. Wish more family did this. Not sure if this will count but, when I was growing up, my dad had an extensive record collection from the 50s and 60s. And I always loved putting them on and listening to them. They were all country bluegrass, and some jazz. But I was huge fan of folks like Patsy Cline, Buck Owens, Dolly Parton, Eddie Arnold, Chet Adkins, Boots Randolph and Johnny Cash just to name a few. Also had some musicals in there like Annie Get Your Gun. We had so many, we had to store them in a trunk since it collapsed out bookshelf. This was of course during the rise of CDs, so finding vinyl was hard unless you came across them at a flea market, or Goodwill or something. Seems weird now that vinyl is out selling CDs and Dolly Parton and Johnny Cash are legends in our generation now. And my favorite song from Annie Get Your Gun is now remixed for athletic commercials. Anything you can do I can do better. For the longest time I couldn't talk about it for fear I was a dork. Now I can't talk about it for fear of being a hipster. It makes sense that vinyl would outsell CDs these days. Vinyl is at least different from downloaded music in that it's an analog signal. And there's some nostalgia cool factor to it. Just wait though, in a couple of decades all the teenagers will be buying Sony Discmans and Avril Lavigne CDs and pining for the good old days. Computers being online. I've been online since 1985. 1983 if you count my short time on CompuServe before my mom who didn't understand how phones really work, told me I had to take the modem back. My first computer, a VIC-20, shopping at Asian markets, started in the early 90s. It became really popular in the early zeros. Red Bull, 
It used to come in these little glass bottles. We were all hit to it in 216 before anyone it seemed. That original Thai Red Bull is interesting stuff. The fizzy stuff that we know and love was developed by an Austrian dude who tried the original stuff and decided to make a version for western tastes. Technically they are separate companies, but I believe that the Thai company now owns around 25% of the Austrian company. Minecraft played it way back in the alpha version before everyone and their mom knew about it. We watched Sinanas make a video about it and bought it immediately and that video was the first spark towards it being the giant it is now. Walled up my kitchen in the height of the open floor plan era, and now whenever I read an article about how renovators are moving away from the open floor plan I take all the credit. I think it kind of depends on how big the space is. My entire house is only 1000 square featuring. When we replaced the wall that separated the kitchen and the living room with an island it made everything feel a lot bigger. I was playing Fortnite before it blew up. They have that co-op story mode save the world that me and my buddies used to play casually and then one day I log in to play NC and option for battle royale. Tried it out the first day but it was just incredibly laggy then actually experienced it on day 2. Had no idea this thing would blow up to be the biggest game in the world during the peak of its popularity. Stopped playing during season 4 but man am I glad I have the black knight skin from the first battle pass. Yeah it was like a zombie tower defense when I played it but I got bored and dropped it. Freaking everything. I'll start doing something and it blows up in a few years. And I am far from cool. I am a 33 year old fat white lady who can barely use her cell phone. My husband calls me accidental hipster. I was doing an engineering job at an elementary school and one of the employees helping me has this weird three pronged spinny thing in his hand. I asked him about it and he said it was some new toy the kids were into. Came home and ordered it on Amazon. A month later everyone and their mother had one. My job made fidget spinner swag with cheap plastic. It was the one time I was ahead of the trend. YouTube. I had a video in 2006 get over a million views. That was big back then. I got some ad revenue, a couple of sponsors, and people putting my videos in compilations. Haven't done anything with it since then. You could probably sell your channel by now. Reading Harry Potter. We had a copy of the Philosopher's Stone before a second book had been announced and before either of them had come out in the US. Absolutely obsessed with it. You couldn't really get any toys or merch back then besides the books themselves so we would make our own. I built shelves out of pipe and old wood because it was less expensive than building or buying traditional bookcases. Now, it's hipster as crap. I could easily sell my bookcase for over $2 K. Ben Folds came to perform at the college I attended in 2005, 2000 total students and the concert might have had 400 people and it was in an auditorium. His opening act was obscure band called The Fray that had a really catch set particularly a song called How to Save a Life. The Cup Song. Before Pitch Perfect came out I was doing the cup thing for a few years. I first saw a girl on YouTube do it while singing Love Story by T Swift. Dude, we were playing the cup game back in the 90s. No associated song. But definitely giant circles of 12 year old girls playing at dance competitions, etc. Trying to see how fast we could go and changing directions to try to get others to mess up. Recording vinyl records off to cassette to play in a portable with headphones. Today, retro turntables to USB into a computer is a thing. Software handles the art. Track names, levels, back then, had to figure all the track times to fit on each side of a 90 minutes cassette, preferred Max L. Now, you just stream or buy songs to load on a phone or watch, then go out and rock dance like nobody knows. Sea shanties. I've been listening to shanties for years and absolutely love all the attention they've gotten. I've been a big fan of a shanty group called The Longest Johns for a while now and the shanty trend did wonders for their career. And I'm so dang happy for them. Assassin's Creed Black Flag made me feel something for sea shanties. Leave a Johnny and Randy Dandio in just top tear. Wearing masks at school. A few weeks before corona really hit I got a BAAA flu but had to attend school since I was sick for so long so I just wore medical masks in class for it not to spread so when corona hit I had masks in frickin bulk. 
the Umbrella Academy. I read the comics back in high school because I was a big fan of My Chemical Romance. To be fair, it wasn't like no one had heard of it before the Netflix show, it won an Eisner, but it's definitely much more well known now, which is awesome. Junji Ito. I did a presentation on him in high school before he really blew up. I just googled horror artists and he was one of the first ones to pop up. I was neck deep in true crime before it was a thing. To the point where folks would ask me why do you know so much about Jeffrey Dahmer? I was the weirdo at the end January 2020 asking people at work if they had heard of this weird virus in China. No one knew what I was talking about or thought it was a big deal. This isn't technically mine, but my grandfather's. He hated plastic and didn't trust it before that was mainstream. And then his ashes were in a Tupperware box for a while until he was able to be spread in his church's memorial garden. I imagine him yelling down from heaven to put him in a vase for Pete's sake. I was into Nirvana early on. I was a subscriber to the Sub Pop single of the month. I heard their cover of Love Buzz before it appeared on Bleach I think it was November of 88. Saw them twice before Nevermind was released. February 89 at Masuji's in San Jose with Mudhoney was a spectacular show in a venue that held less than 70 people. I think it took a couple days of days for the ringing to stop, but it was worth it. Saw them a year later after Bleach was released at the Cactus Club. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.